What do Muslims say regarding the infamous story that happened in the life of Muhammad, Al-Gharaniq, or better known as the Satanic Verses? Early Muslims like as Salaf al-Salihin, which are basically the three first generation of Muslims, they did not object against the Satanic Verses at all. They accepted the story to be authentic. This is why renowned scholars like Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani and Ibn Taymiyyah accepted this story to be authentic incident in the life of Muhammad. Let us hear what the exact position was of people like Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Apologists will tell me the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, violates Deuteronomy 18.20. So what does Deuteronomy 18.20 say? It says, But the Prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. Okay, so what are they talking about with this verse? They're talking about the story of the satanic verses. Muslim scholars refer to it as Qissatul Gharanik or something like that. You know, when, when the prophet was in Mecca, he was reciting Surah Al-Najm, and he recited, wa wa al-ukhra. Have you not seen these three, Alat and Al-Uzza and Manat? These were considered to be goddesses among the, the, the pagans. And then Satan apparently whispered two false verses to the Prophet, which he thought were divine revelation. Um, and eventually the Prophet, the Muslims, and all of the idolaters prostrated. Word then spread that the Prophet had compromised with the idolaters and everything just sort of got along. But then Gabriel informed the Prophet of and those verses were removed from the Quran. So that's sort of the basic story. There's another way of looking at it, and to see it actually as a confirmation of the prophethood, because Gabriel intervened and, and sorted yeah. this out. That was, anyway. Yeah, and that's that's Ibn Taymiyyah's position, and, and it's a, and it's a respectable position. And that's that's Ibn Taymiyyah's position, and, and it's a, and it's a respectable position. And that's that's Ibn Taymiyyah's position, and, and it's a, and it's a respectable position. Initially. But of course, Muslim scholars who defended this story, so some defended it, some criticized it, but among, those, uh, among the Muslims, those who defended the story uh, as being authentic uh, would say, well, uh, of course uh, it happened, but in the end, the Prophet, peace be upon him, made that distinction, and what he gave us in the end is purely from God. There's nothing satanic in there. Um, and the Quran, they will cite another verse of the Quran from the 22nd chapter, uh, in the 52nd verse, which uh, seems, according to their opinion, to allude to this incident. Mm -hmm. So there are famous scholars like Ibn Taymiyyah who believed in the satanic verses, but Ibn Taymiyyah's position was that Allah abrogated the satanic verses in the Quran with a much later Medina verse, namely Surah 22, verse 52, and defended his beloved prophet by canceling out the verses of Satan after eight long years. Imagine, the satanic verses stayed in the Quran for a very long period of time, but they forgot to mention one yet important detail which can be found in Surah 4, verse 48. Allah does not forgive shirk, which is associating partners with him. In other words, shirk is the unforgivable sin in Islam. So did Allah make an exception again for Muhammad? <laughs> It seems that Muhammad is above his Quran, or is he burning in hellfire, according to chapter 4, ayah 48. But Muslim missionaries of today go against what the early Muslims believed. Let's hear the lies of Sheikh Ibn Ketchup when he talks about it. The narration about satanic verses is a fabrication. No Muslim scholar accepts it. Did he just lie about certain scholars like Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and many more? Oh boy. Others like Sister Farida even dares to challenge Christians to bring one authentic report. Very briefly, I challenged Dave, I challenged Dave who I challenged to all the Christian apologists, one authentic report about the satanic verses. That's all I'm asking for. There's nothing. Challenge accepted. Let me show you some authentic ahadith. In book number one, Al-Ahadith Al-Mukhtara, volume 10 by al dihya al-Din Al-Maqdisi, on page 89, we find an authentic hadith. Hadith number 84, all the men in the chain are trustworthy. And it also says, and the men in the chain are of a sahih. 
which means these are the same men mentioned in authentic ahadith like Sahih al-Bukhari or Sahih Muslim. We also read, and a mursal hadith was brought up longer than this authentic hadith, but that other hadith is daif. Notice this is talking about a different hadith, not this one on the page. So let us read this authentic hadith. Satan cast on his tongue, i.e. the tongue of Muhammad, meaning these are the high cranes and their intercession is hoped for. Then Muhammad and all the Muslims and all the pagans prostrated to these female goddesses of Mecca. Notice, sujood is an act of worship. So he, Muhammad, and all of the companions committed shirk by worshipping these female idols. In book number two, Majma' al-Zawad wa Manba' al-Fawa'id, volume seven, by Imam al-Hafiz al-Haythami, on page 115, we find a similar authentic report. And the men in the chain are of a sahih which means these are again the same men mentioned in authentic ahadith like Sahih al-Bukhari or Sahih Muslim. And we also read, and a mursal hadith was brought up in Surah al-Hajj longer than this authentic hadith, but that other hadith is daif in the chain of narration. And in book number 3, Ad-Durr al-Manthur, volume 10 by Jalal al-Din al on page 525, we find two different ahadith about the satanic verses. One says, Regarding the chain of narration, its men are trustworthy. And the other hadith on the same page, the chain of narration is sahih. That's it. I'm convinced that Muhammad is not the prophet of Satan. Yeah, right. Without lies, Islam dies. Hey you, yes you, just stay away from Islam.